Hi everyone, today we're going to profile AMTX, AMTX on NASDAQ. Why did I choose to profile AMTX? It's because I was looking for an environmentally based company with a low market cap and a huge potential. Eric has funded more than 25 companies as principal investor and has founded seven public companies that had combined market values of $4 billion. He's a serial entrepreneur. Mr. McAfee is a graduate of the Stanford Executive Business Program and also the Harvard Private Equity and Venture Capital Program. At this point, I'd like to make a standard disclaimer. I'm not a financial advisor. Do your own due diligence. You can make a huge amount of money or you can also lose your shirt. What am I going to cover in this presentation? I'm going to give you my view of the future potential of the stock value of AMTX and I differ from the analysts. We're going to have a Q&A with the CEO throughout the presentation. We're going to actually go visit one of the RNG installations, that's the Renewable Natural Gas. We're going to go to the unofficial ribbon cutting of the carbon sequestration area. I'm going to give you an overview of all the contracts signed for sustainable aviation fuel and the renewable diesel contracts. Mr. McAfee will give you an overview of the Nebo Motors opportunity. I'll go through a top line of the risks AMTX is facing. Also, how will AMTX fund all these projects? And then a brief overview of the management team. What is the forecast for AMTX's stock price? If you look at what the professionals say, Stonegate Capital came up with a great analysis in August 2022. They took the AMTX five-year plan that shows $460 million of EBITDA and applied industry multiples comparables against that figure and came out with a $3.2 billion market cap. That's 10x from the current market cap of $300 million. They come up with a stock price between $21 and $46 based on a variety of discount rates. On September 5th, 2022, Credit Suisse came up with a midterm target of $27. What's my guess? I project the 2026 EBITDA to be closer to $1 billion, which forecasts out a market cap of around $7.5 billion. Why is that? Well, the biggest part of EBITDA uplift that I'm putting in is from carbon sequestration, whose potential is over $570 million per year. That's greater than the entire current 2026 EBITDA plan of $460 million which only includes $80 million from carbon sequestration. What are the key things to understand in this stock price target? AMTX is transforming itself to produce cleaner fuels and reduce carbon emissions, and it still has four years to go. In my view, the next eight quarter results are mostly irrelevant for the big picture. The current balance sheet and profitability issues are based on the legacy ethanol businesses which should be transformed with the above plans. The federal, state, and municipal incentives are central to the plan, so there is some political risk of changing political priorities over time. If we do a bottom-up analysis of the value of AMTX stock, we have to go through the four diversified sources of cash flow. Applying standard industry multiples against the legacy California and India ethanol plants we get a 2026 market cap estimate for that segment of $320 million, which is essentially the full market cap today in the market. Applying industry multiples against the SAF and renewable diesel plant, I get that component valued at $1.2 billion. The RNG, I value at $1.5 billion. And the carbon sequestration, by far the largest component of potential profit, valued at $4.5 billion. So in total, I get a market cap estimate of $7.5 billion in 2026. Let's dive a little deeper into carbon capture and sequestration. Here's the uh, CEO and uh, chairman of, uh, and co-founder of Amidus, Eric McAfee. Hi, this is the groundbreaking for our carbon sequestration project. We have about 24 acres, which we purchased in June at our Riverbank uh, U.S. Army ammunition plant site. And we're building the road right now. It's about a half million dollar road, by the way, that uh, connects the public street to the first well we're drilling. 
So our process is later on this year to build what's called a characterization well. And the, the road you see built right here is in order to be able to roll the drilling rig out to the site and start drilling that well, which would be about an 8,000 foot well, showing what all the different formations look like. We use then that for the EPA Class 6 license, and then this well will be part of the injection of carbon, carbon into the ground in the, in the carbon sequestration process. So the way the revenue works in carbon sequestration is we generate a federal tax credit called a 45Q tax credit, and under the Inflation Reduction Act, every year we file our tax credits and that is paid for to us by the IRS in cash. It's called direct pay. So the other side of revenue is California Low Carbon Fuel Standard Credits, which should, today would generate about $160 million a year for our two sequestration wells. But with the LCFS, Low Carbon Fuel Standard, demand going up between now and January 2024, when the rules are being uh, expanded into the next phase, we expect it to go to about $200 a credit. Well, 2 million tons a year times $200 per credit is $400 million of revenue. So 400 from low carbon fuel standard per year, another 170 paid in cash by the IRS. Together, the two is $570 million in total revenue. Is there like a, uh, how far out can this go? Is it infinitum? Actually, 12, 12 years for the federal, five years are paid in cash, and then the next seven years, they kind of assume you're already paid off like the project cost, and that's the tax credit. It's transferable, so we can sell it every year. So every year it's cash. This happens through the first five years, it's from the IRS. The next seven years, it's from whoever buys the tax credit. $570 million potential carbon sequestration. I couldn't believe my ears. I had to ask the question again. The carbon sequestration provisions in the Inflation Reduction Act provide about $85 per ton in a cash payment from the IRS. It's in the form of a refund, refunded tax credit, but just call it a tax payment from the IRS to a metals. Uh, that $85 times 2 million tons, we're doing two wells and one ton each, means that every single year for five years, Amedis gets $170 million in cash from the IRS. Now on top of that, we generate roughly another $80 million uh, per well, so $160 million per year from the low carbon fuel standard in California. But if it goes from $80 to $200, we end up with $400 million a year from the low carbon fuel standard, plus $170 million from the federal, so total $570 million a year for carbon sequestration. Let's take a tour of a renewable natural gas installation. So we're at one of our first two dairies. This has been operational for two years. Uh, over here to my right is a dairy, has a couple thousand dairy cows in it. They separate out the solids and then the liquid and, and the organics, it's the stuff that makes the biogas, goes into a pipe and ends up underneath this layer of plastic. This, what we're standing on right here is about 15 feet deep. And it's, think about it as a pond that has two layers of plastic underneath uh, and then one across the top. So we capture whatever's coming out the top, but we don't allow any leaking out the bottom. Uh, this set of gas pipes here capture the gas and move it to our what's known as hydrogen sulfide cleanup unit. This uh, is a process of doing two things. Number one is take out a kind of a nasty smelling thing called hydrogen sulfide. It smells like rotten eggs. Mm -hmm. And then press. And so our hydrogen sulfide and compression uh, system here uh, takes out the, the, the rotten egg smell and then pressurizes up uh, so that it's about 100 pounds per square inch and can go into that biogas pipeline that goes back to our ethanol plant. Our ethanol plant is, you can see in the horizon right there, it's about four miles away. I also think there's financial opportunity in excess of the five-year plan for RNG. The key to this business is that our carbon intensity is negative 426, compared to gasoline at a positive 93. So we generate over 500 low carbon fuel standard credits from this business compared to, let's say, a uh, ethanol plant that might only generate about 15 credits. Those low carbon fuel standard credits are temporarily in California being reset to a much higher level of demand over the next 18 months. And so the price was about $218 two years ago. It's about $80 today for those credits. As it rises back to the $200 level, 
our revenues from these uh, this this whole biogas business uh, goes up by almost 100 million dollars a year as we build out this entire operation. So a very significant part of our revenues isn't even showing up yet. Now it's a very good business even at 80 dollars, but at 200 and 220 dollars, this is a very sustainable business contributing value to the entire dairy industry, local communities, and lowering costs for the trucking industry. Trucking industry impacts consumer prices, food prices, everything you can think of because of the ability to move away from diesel to this lower cost natural gas, we're directly lowering those costs. In general, we significantly reduce the odors of dairy because before it gets into our dairy digester, it's just basically flowing. We've separated it, we kept it inside of a pipe under the ground, and then it's just flowing, so there's not very much odor. And once it gets into the methane digester, there's no odor really at all because we're capturing that gas and using it as fuel to power diesel engines or replace them. Sure. So the solids that come out of the manure end up being very useful to the dairy. Uh, bedding, uh, manure is a great fertilizer. So there's lots and lots of uses by the dairy. You can see here a long rows of that material that comes from the solids. The liquid is what goes into our digestion. So this is the liquid product flowing directly from the dairy after being separated from solids, and then it goes into our uh, biogas digest. This is the Emetis biogas facility that's brand new. We just had the ribbon cutting about two months ago. And right here behind me is the interconnect to the Pacific Gas and Electric Gas Utility. This takes the biogas that's made at our dairies. Pipeline here, we've already built more than 20 miles of pipeline, gas pipeline. It's cleaned up in this large facility, the biogas to renewable natural gas conversion facility. And then it's actually tested and odor is added by the Pacific Gas and Electric Company skin behind me here before it goes into the utility gas pipeline. Once it's in the pipeline, it can, it can be pulled out anywhere in the state of California to be used in trucking to displace, to replace diesel. So instead of using carbon intensive, dirty diesel from petroleum, using the waste biogas from dairies that can directly replace that petroleum in the state of California. which is taking animal feed to the 80 dairies to feed the 100,000 dairy cows that we feed with our disclosure brand. It runs on diesel. But right here to our right is the biogas cleanup unit that makes renewable natural gas. So we're building a fueling station here at the plant, right here behind me next to our finished goods ethanol plant. So we can fuel renewable natural gas into what otherwise would be a diesel truck. The fourth source of future cash flow, and in my opinion, the most sexiest of the bunch, is the sustainable aviation fuel and renewable diesel. These will be produced at the Amidus production plant currently under development in the Riverbank, California. This facility is designed to use renewable hydrogen and zero carbon intensity hydroelectric electricity to hydro treat sustainable renewable oils to produce these environmentally friendly fuels. On September 7th, 2022, Aminus announced that it is now completely sold out the capacity for this plant for the next 10 years with a total value of contracts of $7 billion. Binding contracts have been signed with airlines' biggest players, including American Airlines and Delta for over a billion dollars each, and JetBlue for over 500 million. This new Riverbank plant should be up and going by 2025, and I have an estimate of $150 million of EBITDA by 2026, valuing this portion of the operation at $1.2 billion, and I'm assuming we'll just go up from there. We've got three major diversified projects on the go at the same time. The RNG, the SAF and RD, and the carbon sequestration. How are we going to pay for all this? The five-year capital plan shows that we're going to be in for $902 million of capital expenditures. The aim of this official five-year plan has about 100 million in free cash flow from RNG in 2023 and 2024. 
Amos has recently signed a $100 million line of credit at lower interest rates that's going to help uh, launch the carbon sequestration and SAF plants. Aside from the $100 million in free cash flow in the next couple of years in RNG, there's also a $100 million loan from the USDA Renewable Energy for America program, which could be increased in the future. There's $90 million in ITCs that can be received over five years. And the municipal bond market in California has potential of $50 million tax-free bond blocks. On the SAF and RD side, the Build Back Better new uh, federal legislation gives a potential of $80 million a year for funding. There's also a $125 million loan from the U.S. Department of Agriculture. On the carbon sequestration side, there's up to $850 million in cash from the IRS over the next five years in cash payments, which is up to $2 billion over 12 years. On top of that, there's up to $400 million per year from the low carbon fuel standard from California. All this excess capital can help fund the SAF and RNG uh, projects as well. AMTX also always pursues non-dilutive sources of financing first, but worst case scenario, they also do have an approved $300 million ATM equity line if needed. Needless to say, there's a lot of moving parts. I'm expecting that the senior management team with a vast amount of experience is going to be able to match the project financing with the cash flows coming in to make this a successful endeavor. AMTX management and the AMTX board of directors are seasoned veterans. The CEO has deep investments in the dairy business, the almond farmer business in California, and has invaluable relationships. These dairy relationships are crucial to build trust among farmers to put them on the AMTX RNG plan. John Block on the board was a former U.S. Secretary of Agriculture. His knowledge and contacts are key to get project financing done. Lydia on the board worked for Chevron for 38 years. Who knows, maybe they're going to be a bio candidate in the future. I hope you enjoyed my presentation. As you can see, there's a big risk reward profile here. As Warren Buffett said, the intrinsic value of a company is just simply the discounted value of the cash it could be taking out of the business during its remaining life. The potential for AMTX is undeniable. Please do your own due diligence. I'm adding a short appendix on Nevo Motors because none of the analysts actually look at this. AMTX owns approximately 20% of Nevo Motors. There are a lot of players in the EV space, even on the truck side. The jet fuel plant in Riverbank, California has 700,000 square feet, so it will have some ample space for projects such as Nevo Motors to operate out of. There are a lot of players in the EV truck space with big market caps. My sense is AMTX is going to delve into the space when the timing is right. Here's the CEO of AMTX describing Nevo Motors. We announced a shareholder ownership interest and a strategic partnership with Nevo Motors, which stands for New Electric Vehicle Optimization. The key word in that sentence is optimization. What are we doing to optimize electric vehicles? Electric vehicles have an electric drivetrain. They need some batteries to be able to store energy temporarily for the electric drivetrain. But you don't have to have so many batteries that you carry all the energy for the entire load for the entire distance. You can actually use a renewable, let's say carbon negative fuel like renewable natural gas to onboard the vehicle, generate the electricity commonly known as onboard charging. So by having an onboard generator fueled with carbon negative fuel, your electric vehicle, instead of running on coal or petroleum natural gas, could actually be running on carbon negative renewable natural gas or even ethanol. I'd like to thank our sponsor, DNA Match.love, who do personality DNA assessment and matching, as well as free online dating.